Welcome, good-natured viewers, to another edition of Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Today, we feature the second part of a two-part series on Mary Getton, a telepathic animal communicator from the state of Washington, USA. Miss Getton is the winner of the 2007 Nautilus Book Award for Communicating with Orcas, The Whale's Perspective. As the title suggests, the book chronicles her inner conversations with orcas and how these special beings view the world. The Nautilus Book Award is for works that contribute significantly to our society's well-being and embrace spiritual and ecological values such as compassion, sustainability, simplicity, and global peace. Recently, Miss Gettin kindly took time from her busy schedule to share with us some of the messages she has received while communicating on a heart-to-heart -heart level with both wild and domestic animals. I'm a professional telepathic animal communicator. Um, I've spent the last 15 years talking to people's animals around the world and I do most of my work on the phone. Telepathy is the universal language and so you don't need to be with an animal. Time and space really doesn't matter. Um, I've spent more than 25 years working with marine mammals and my professional practice, I spend most of my time talking to domestic animals. For a person who wants to connect with animals, you don't have to study how to talk to horses or cats or dogs. It's the same place that you go inside, this quiet, deep place where you can connect with another being. And it doesn't matter if it's a frog or a slug or a tree or a dog or a cat or a whale. It's all that same place. So when you learn how to communicate telepathically, you can use it for anything, really. We asked Miss Gettin what the canines and felines she has interacted with over the many years have expressed to her regarding their purpose on Earth. I've talked to thousands of dogs and cats in my 15 years as a professional communicator, and um, they run the gamut. In, in their expression and their purpose and mission in life. And I've talked to dogs that are highly spiritual. And um, I, I'm thinking of one in particular who uh, the people had called me because he kept going to the neighbor's house. And so when I talked to the dog, he said, well, he said, this man needs help. And I go over there to send him love. And I'm trying to help him. So here's this dog, you know, who's just all about his heart and working with people. That was that dog. Some of them do have, I would say, a specific mission, maybe to be with a particular person, where um, they have some lessons or learnings that they can do together in, that, in this lifetime. Others are protective, certainly. And some are there just to make us laugh and to lighten us up. Some animals are just so much fun. Um, actually, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about a horse I talked to once, um, just to give you a, a horse's sense of humor. Um, the woman was asking me if, if her horse really enjoyed working or if he was ready to retire. And so I got quiet and I talked to the horse and he showed me a picture of himself sitting in a hot tub. And when I told her, she just cracked up. She said, that is so him, because she said, he always sends me pictures of him wearing a Hawaiian shirt. So some of them, you know, it comes out of nowhere. They can just be really funny, you know, or they can be really serious, but animals definitely have all the emotions that we have. The caregivers of the cat Candy wanted to learn more about her feelings and wishes and to let her know their concerns regarding the dangers to her posed by cars on the street. Miss Gettin communicated with Candy to find out the answers to several questions. Yeah, you know, going outside would be, um, that would be good for her because it would give her some space from the other cats. Um, she says she does understand about cars, and what I did there was I told her that um, if she would stay on the grass, she would be safe. So that's a message you can give to cats, you know, if you're on the grass, you're going to be safe. If you go out on the, at the pavement, the asphalt, then that's when a car can come and hit you. So she said she would stay on the grass. 
She, she doesn't really have a desire to be running around in the traffic. When we come back, we will continue with our fascinating discussion about the world of animals with Mary Gettin. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Animal World, our co-inhabitants, where we are featuring an interview with a wonderful telepathic animal communicator from the United States, Miss Mary Gettin. Dolphins are certainly special marine mammals with a long history of helping humans, whether it be rescuing a person lost at sea or protecting a ship from danger. Some programs provide therapy for those who are not well by taking them to the open ocean to swim with dolphins. We asked Mary Gettin about the therapeutic effects of interacting with dolphins. Dolphins are really interesting. Um, they are really about love. And um, I've talked to many dolphins who said their mission is to open human hearts one heart at a time. Some of them, though, that do feel they have a mission to work with humans, what they do is um, they send the correct vibration into the human body. So it's not like they're trying to fix what's wrong, but they will come up and they will often put their nose onto a person and they are sending the right vibration for that body to be in balance. And then of course it's up to you and your body to allow that energy to come in and stimulate your own healing response. So that's generally what they're doing from the dolphins I've talked to about it. Um, and I have worked on dolphin healing projects with people. And so it's, uh, it's more a correct vibration they send than trying to fix a bad liver or something like that. Is it a sound frequency? Is it something that might be detected as sound? Is it an energy that is not visible or cannot be detected? Uh, you can feel it. I've, I've, I've you know, had that experience with dolphins where they come and they'll put their beak on you and they're sending an actual physical vibration and you can feel this sort of buzzing in your body. You can't hear it, or at least I couldn't hear it, but you could definitely feel it. Like It was like bubbles coming into your body, sort of. That was this buzzing energy coming in. Wow. Are there some examples that you've had over all these years of communicating with different animals where animals have um, saved their own lives, maybe because of something they've said? For example, it could be a, a fish in a, a lake saying that we're all being polluted by this lake. Humans, would you help? In my conversations with the orcas, um, they have said that there is a metal in the water that's affecting their health and affecting the uh, survivability of their calves. And um, I've often wondered exactly what that is, if it's mercury. And um, when you asked that question, it reminded me of another communicator once I remember who had the um, experience of hearing fish. They were in a, a pond that had dried up and they were calling out, help, we're stuck, there's no water. And she heard them and she went and she put them all into a bucket and took them to another lake. I think the reason she got that was that it was quite emotional. You know, they were really calling out, we're in big trouble here. And so she was able to get them and take them somewhere else. At this point in time where the earth is ailing, there is global warming, uh, the oceans are definitely polluted, we know the air is polluted. Are there messages coming from animals or the earth itself um, sort of guiding us as to how we can take care of the earth to preserve it? The species that I've heard the most from that is really saying help, we need help, is the trees. It's the large trees, and what they keep saying is that, you know, a hundred small trees cannot do the work that one giant tree can do, because the trees really are holding the energy for the planet, and they're connected, and they're creating an oxygen, and they keep the planet in uh, balance. And if you'll notice people who live near the forest, Energetically, they're much calmer. They're more in balance. You go into a city where there's no trees and the energy is crazy and the people are acting out. Um, they do a lot towards keeping us calm and relaxed. 
And those large trees that we keep cutting down in these forests that are going, 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 that I think is actually causing a lot of the uh, earthquakes and things like that on the planet because the trees are not there holding that balance of energy. Trees that are saying, help, we need help, you gotta stop cutting so many big trees because we can't do our job anymore. We sincerely thank Mary Gettin for providing her insights into the enchanting world of telepathic animal communication and for sharing with us the thoughts and messages of many different species of animals. May she help many more humans and animals understand each other better and to always live in love and harmony. For more details on Mary Gettin, please visit www.marygettin.com. Communicating with Orcas, The Whale's Perspective, is available at the same website. Thank you, dedicated viewers, for joining us on this edition of Animal World, Our Co-Inhabitants. Up next is enlightening entertainment after noteworthy news. May divine love bring you everlasting happiness and joy. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash AW.